Oh my god, attack her, please. Sam has that yellow truck over there. So we rigged it up from the airlift hooks and from the back hooks. We chained the Hummer up to it and picked it up off the ground and flew the truck underneath. If only you can smell it right now. Oh, God. You smell that? Yeah, I can smell it now. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, that's bad. What is this? Dude, this thing's up. Oh, whoa, 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 bro, bro, don't get that close. There are literally like 10 million fleas in there. They attacked Tommy earlier today. <laughs> really? Sam, awesome. this is Tommy. Tommy What's up, man? Sam. How are you? Good to see you. That's me, bro. Yeah. That's Dang, Jason that is, uh, over here behind the camera. What up, man? What's up, man? How are you? That so you were in here this morning cleaning it out, getting it prepped, ready to go, right, Tommy? Yeah, so we decided we're gonna vacuum it out and clean it up before it goes in the rack. And this morning, just started on, just started getting itchy, looking closer, there's fleas jumping around. Flo and Cheeto had them on there too. Dude, they were running around at like 6.30 this morning with like in their friggin' chonies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stripping Stripped down. Off with the air gun, just blowing ourselves yeah. off. I got a solution for you, dude. I'm ready to see what you got. I'll be right back. <laughs> Even when it showed up, just like the smell, even yeah, can, even even the dog was like looking at it, like, "What the hell is this thing, dude?" Yeah, I can smell it from here. It smells disgusting. All right, ready? Look at this. <laughs> We're gonna tarp this son of a bitch. No, you are not. You're gonna fog it. I oh got a six God. pack of foggers, but I also got this, so you can just personally kill a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm gonna spray myself <laughs> down when I'm that, done. That works too, man. Set up the tarp on top. Yeah. Throw some cans in there, drop the tarp down, and then just fog this whole area. And then power wash the hell out of it. Yeah. And Tommy on film seems like he's super happy and chipper, you know. Different story this morning. Hang out. No, different guy this morning. He was angry. Yeah. He literally almost went home. I was pretty pissed. I shouldn't say we, because I didn't. But Cheeto and Flo over there did. He's all swollen still. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to bust up my, my brand new brush so I could, you know, be scratching myself. I don't have fingernails. Right as we're about to bomb it, Sam showed up, and right. I totally forgot you were coming in today because hey. I wasn't supposed to be here. Yeah. I was supposed to be far, far away. I heard Not your voice from behind the fence, and I was like, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sam and I go way back. I, I, what'd you say, it was like 12 years or 14 years? Oh, yeah, it was 2010 like when I was here last. So, 2010, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, yeah. So, get this call from him, he's like, hey, I got this deal with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm gonna do this SBO kit on it. Can we work together on the on the project? Like, yeah, come on down. We had all the same problems every Hummer yeah. guy's always had. He was talking about windshields and engines. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. like, oh yeah. But you know what stood out most for me? I was sitting over here and I was walking him over this way. He's like, oh, hold on, Ryan. Hold on, just one sec. He saw somebody out of the corner of his eye in the corner of the shop, like 70 feet away, that was staring at him like in awe. And he's like, hold on, I'll be right back. Walked over and he's like, hey, I'm Arnold. How are you doing? What's your name? What do you do here? And dude, that resonated with me on like, how badass a person he is. Went out of his way to go over and talk to him. And not just say, hey, I'm Arnold, how you doing? And walk away. Yeah, he was, was here for a while. Questions. Questions. That's what like, it was pretty cool. It was rad. And we converted two of his trucks, I think. We did, we did an old Humvee, and then we did that red uh, soft top. It was yeah. pretty slick by the time so, it was done. Remember we put that little uh, Predator sticker on the back <laughs> tailgate? Yeah. It's still rolling around. No way. Yeah, that's it's awesome. It's still rolling around LA. It's pretty rad. And back then, Sam was just starting out with this lighting company and getting it off the ground, and now it's just exploding. Yeah. And he's like, you know what? I've got this truck in the back. Like, my truck, I was gonna say piece of, yeah. but anyways. You can call it exactly, it call a spade a spade. Yeah. That thing's seen better days. How many engines have I sent you? You've sent me two, I've put in two, and AM General sent me one. So there's like five engines. Five engines. 
I remember the last one you were like, hey, this thing is going to explode. Are you sure you want to install it? And I'm like, yo, I just gotta get this thing running again. And you're like, okay, this is a band-aid. Like, you're just gonna send it to me a Duramax at one day. Yeah, yeah. So now is the day. Yeah, so now is the day. So we're gonna do a Duramax inversion on it. Yep. Gonna outfit it for your company. Like Sam, the best thing to do is just come in and go over your build. But more importantly, let's go over a bunch of trucks. It actually timed out perfectly because we have the six passenger truck here that we built up with the exoskeleton years ago. Uh, customer lives up in uh, Orange County, which is like 45 minutes from here. Yeah. And he's actually moving to Florida. He's like, hey, I want to get it in, do some service work before it goes to Florida. So I know it's dialed, doing a bunch of service work on it and then sleeping. So anyways, uh, we're going to go over the truck, go over some possible yes, interior upgrades, kind of see what we want to do and go from there. <laughs> see if you guys can handle this project. It's yeah. a big one. You want to go take a look at your truck? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, All right. So yeah, so here it is. It's been wrecked a few times too. It's got like single stage back here. It's got base and clear up here that obviously wasn't very well applied. I probably did it myself. It still has a sticker though. Look at that. Hell yeah. Original. So we got to rip it apart. Got to do some body work. Got to do some interior work. Got to put an engine in it. So? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, a lot. What happened here? Fire damage? No, it's bad body work. I was driving it to a fire call in the snow one time, ripping around a corner. Because it was like came out as a rag with a pin, and so I'm like, I'm moving. And so I'm like in a turn, the plow picked up halfway through the turn, all of a sudden it snowed. So I fly off the road, because so the other side's all smashed up. I went through this fence, I was like, fuck. So yeah, conversion, we'll do a Duramax and an Allison. I think that's the best way to go. We gotta fix all the body stuff. Pretty much everything on the body that could be wrong is wrong. Okay. So all of the above. We gotta replace the HVAC, it hasn't worked ever. So, so that's bad right now. It leaks now, yeah. Well, it, on top of that too, sitting that long, the it's, heater core is usually it's, it's, In fact, we got a truck that has 20, I think it's like 24,000 miles. We just finished it up right now. We're finishing it up right this second. Oh, sick. We're gonna wash it. It's going up for sale. Oh, no One way. owner truck. It's a 2003. It's like, oh, that's a sweet one too. Oh, dude, dang. Pristine. But it shows when these trucks sit for a long time, low mileage trucks, yeah. they've got serious. Maybe not serious as good as buying one that's got some miles on it. It's, it's in. not, it really yeah. isn't. But this one's pretty cool because all that stuff has been fixed. That's awesome. It's ready to go. That's so sick. that's like kind of the best of both worlds because <laughs> that's it was really cool. repaired properly. So yeah, you're gonna have heater core that's bad. I'm sure all the seals are gonna be bad. Every seal on the entire truck is bad. Ball joints are bad. I put them in and then I broke all the seals testing them with the pry bar and didn't know what I was doing. And so I broke every boot. So every ball joint's good, but the boots are all bad. And then I want to build a roof rack. Stuff is all bolted to the outside, but I want to yank this one off yeah. and build a Predator roof rack that fits our new lighting system in the roof rack. All the way well, down if the you send me the lights right now, I we can them. integrate them. Oh, yeah. If we can pull it off, and this is a big if because it's kind of a big lift, but the factory electrical system in this, in this Hummer is sort of similar to a fire truck electrical system. So it switches and relays, it's really basic. Yeah. And with all the accessories that are going on here, we're partnering with a major fire truck manufacturer to build an integrated solution where warning lights tie into the fire truck electrical system and they talk to each other. That's going to be the deal is the new lights, the new electrical system, the whole thing communicating together. And it'll modernize a lot of this stuff on the truck for all the accessories. It'll let us have that touchscreen interface and the whole can communication yeah. background. It's going to be pretty slick. I want to show the viewers the inside of what you gave us. Just, just so you Was that all fucked up like that when it got here? Or did you guys pull apart? Oh no, we got in there and just <laughs> fucked it up. Like, yeah, that's, that's what no, it came. No, it wasn't on the yeah. dash. That's how it came in like this. No. Uh-huh. Oh, it was all put together when it left my office. Really? The dog owls was sitting, all that shit was put together. They must have popped it open to look what's under there. That shit hasn't been connected in years. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it was sitting in there. Where's your wire harness on the engine? Ah, you don't need that. You have glow plugs that don't have like connectors on there. Oh yeah, no, you don't need those. <laughs> That was because I probably doesn't blew the it get cold and... where you live? Yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen the snow. I honestly have no idea what's going on underneath the hood of this thing. Oh, dude. Pretty much everything's probably unhooked. With the harness going in that many times and the engine going in that many times, it's bound to be missing some stuff. I bought this truck when I was 16. I saved up every dollar I could possibly buy. It's got 100,000 miles, 120,000 miles on it. I drove it. <laughs> Why do you have broken spare parts? So I used to run that shop, the biofuel shop, and customers would bring us a truck that was broken, and so they're like, "Oh, I need a power steering pump," and I'd be like, "Well, my power steering pump." is worse than this core that I took off the customer's truck. So I'd buy, you know, we'd buy the new, the new pump, go on their truck, their core would come off and go on my truck, my core would go back to the auto parts store. That's literally the story of Sam's truck. <laughs> Everything like, on it is Okay, like well, that. your engine's slightly better than mine since mine doesn't work at all, and yours barely runs, so I'll go ahead and take that, throw yeah. it in there. Oil pressure's above zero, yeah, it's better than what I got in there, so go for it. 1970 screwdriver. Oh yeah, it's removable. Special feature, yeah.
wait. How can we tell if they're actually dead? When they do the conversion, they'll know. <laughs> okay. I'm sure you'll hear from Randy if there's anything remotely wrong with Randy, the truck. Randy, no, he doesn't complain about it. Of course not. Not Randy. <laughs> Never fleas can jump, so probably already on you. Look at that. Look, look at it. There's a starter there, Jason. Be careful. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. There's a lot of different types of poo in there. There's huh? a lot of there's a lot going like, on here. It's like a nature. It belongs to nature. It's not a Humvee anymore. It's like dog poo, cat poo. I think that's raccoon over there. I wonder where this thing was kept. He's feeling things on me right now. Look, they took the dipstick out of the motor and just left it, and now it's just completely rusted. So I'm sure that trans is no good. Full of water. Please. Oh, yeah. Never leave your dipstick out because that's how the fleas get in the end. Tommy! Spraying out all this poop? You're like Mike Rowe on Dirty Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Always something new here. <laughs> nice. This is the magic one. So this is called the VG2. This is a spotlight on the top, a real wide floodlight in the middle. It's called a steam light, but an asymmetric downward shining light on the bottom. And each row is individually PWM controllable, so you can change the intensity, you can change where it's lighting. You know the rigid bar that changes this way as you're going? It changes, yeah, yeah, yeah. this changes vertically. So when you stop oh, on right. the scene, all the light shines down. When, when you're like looking for addresses, it shines out. And the middle row is an optic that has traffic correctors. So it turns turns amber and does like traffic correctors down the side of the wow. vehicle. Dude, this thing's heavy too. Dude, that's that's solid. solid. That's a serious fixture. It's big. Wow. And so what we're launching is a warning light version of this. This is a white scene light. So like fire trucks that help illuminate the roadway like when you're working on an incident. And so an off-road light is like designed to help you while you're driving. Fire trucks are stopped. And so it's all stationary lighting, which is very different than Oh, moving makes lighting. sense. Yeah, yeah. We have for years done steady burning white work lighting for emergency vehicles. And that's been our kind of our brand expertise. But we're launching a new range of warning lights that are as durable as our scene lights were but have some unique control optimizations and some unique integrations. And we're building on the scene light product portfolio and expanding it. This product, we wanna basically build a roof rack that incorporates some of these modules into it. And what we're launching is a new warning light. Instead of these little four inch modules, it's a three banger. That's one cast tooling that's got three, basically like a lens of three these okay. halves together. And then you can make like a full warning light bar like you'd see on the front of a fire truck. Yeah. But it sits on these extrusions and that sort of thing. And what I want to do is I want to build some of these modules into the side of the roof rack, install the blinking lights around the vehicle in mm -hmm. a variety of locations. So that it's basically we're building a little fire truck. Super sleek flush mount. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like just a little yeah. clean slither. Yeah. The main selling feature, the main thing that our customers are excited about this product is that it's super duper durable. The whole pitch that we're making to the market is you can literally hang a Humvee from the bottom one of these things. And so we rigged it up. We took from the airlift hooks and from the back hooks, we chained the Hummer to it. And then we brought a commercial tow truck in and picked it up off the ground and flew the truck underneath uh, the light right. picture. And they survived. So at the show, we're going to take this truck and we're going to take a big truss superstructure around our booth. And then we're gonna jack it up and build four jack stands that hold the truck just like slightly off the ground, kind of at an angle. Then we'll mock up like we were hanging it from the warning lights. Yeah. And then all the way around the truss, we'll have all the TVs showing that you know, yeah, test. Cool. And it'll be like, that's check cool. out the most durable warning lights ever produced, introducing the FireTech BG2 system. Uh, yeah, that's right. You guys have some good kits that are stuff we don't make. And so I don't necessarily wanna put factory stuff back on. What's, but the, what's the deal with this? Side marker lights here. Those are not made to be side markers. They're probably too bright. But they need to go on. <laughs> yeah. Fix yeah, that resistor cool. in there. Yeah. We're super techy here. The message that we're going to be displaying at this show is like, this is the most industrial lighting system ever built. And it's the toughest and the most durable and the most badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like no Mickey Mouse, no yeah. fucking Chrome. Like this thing needs to look like. Yeah. Cool. We can do that. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So ultimately, I guess we should look at like, I don't know any, if you guys have a couple, of dig through suit interiors, look like I can point to some stuff I like. I, mean, I don't know, like that's yeah. the way to do it. That's what we should actually do that. Yeah. All right, cool.
but I am so overwhelmed with Monday so far. <laughs> it's been a good Monday. For Between you. Sam's yeah. truck and that, I'll be out there, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. Like, this is a lot of work. I mean, just taking the roof off of your truck. I can be out here as often as I need to be out here. I think the biggest thing is for today is get your eyes on all the trucks. Like, okay. get your eyes on the interior here. It's Al's truck out there. Yeah. Get eyes on that. And you're like, okay, I like this. I don't like that. Yeah. And once you got a game plan, you can say, hey, I want this, this, and this. And Perfect. Done. Well, let's look at some. So up here, I need to build a three or four battery bank storage system. Okay. And so I'll send all that stuff out, but that'll all go here that'll power the truck electrical system. And then on that side, I'm gonna get a giant inverter and power management system. Uh, what about mounting the batteries underneath the seat here? Keep it low. I could. I mean, they're, they're lithium iron phosphate batteries. If we're building new seat bases, we could stuff them under here. Yeah, you could do like two here and two over there. Yeah, we could. The back will have, the slide out will basically come up to here and it'll, so this, it can either come all the way up or it can come up to here. I'm kind of thinking just do this back area so that mm -hmm. then this is still open. What other stuff do you typically do on the interior? We'll, like we'll want to rip all these out and I'll send new lights for, we have new like full replacement kits that'll be those, like, they're bigger that. lights that would go inside. Okay. Nice. And so I'll send those. So you got these lights up here. You also have the lights down here, the little growth style. Oh yeah, like lights. lights, yeah. So you can do something there too if you want. Anywhere where there's a light in the truck, I want to replace it. When you guys yank the interior, once it's all the way out, that's when we'll probably want to have the discussion about the electrical system. And so once you have the interior out and the body's off, and you're kind of in that phase, we're going to need to run huge cabling for the back set of batteries. And then we'll need to run cabling probably back to like a master stud over here somewhere so that then they can link into this yeah. tray system. And then we'll need to run big cabling up to the roof as well. And so while it's out, that'll be the time to yeah, do it all. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that might be even something we do when the body's up and we start running some lines. Yeah, underneath you know, of it yeah. or whatever, yeah. It's gonna be a stop tail turn and have like a directional arrow in it. It's like yes. the back of a fire truck. I think it would look sick to get rid of this thing and then mount this down in its place and just like, I don't know, fiberglass this around so that it's clean and mean. And this would be like a turn signal indicator. Yeah. So we could bring this over like this, build the back area up, cover this over, still keep the pocket because the pocket has that Hummer look. Yeah, the Hummer looks important. And, and we filled them in before, and once they're gone, it doesn't look the same. It looks more yeah. rounded. No, I don't want it to be rounded. So, I like yeah. that bulky, have that pocket there. What do you guys do on this stuff? Do you have like just new we marker We have clear marker lights, yeah. Yeah, look okay. good. Other yeah, small lights could go here. Go right here? Yeah, do the smallest ones. That could be pretty sick. That'd be pretty sick, man. And you could use the same ones up there. What I'll do is I'll have our mechanical engineers draw up some ideas, just some basic okay. like sketches. We don't need to move that forward in, for another month or two, yeah? Because they're going to be doing all so Yeah, we got, we got lots of time. I'm thinking is mount this guy up inside here. If it's built in and it looks like a part of the roof rack, we'll do them in black, we won't do them in white. Oh, rad, okay. Yeah, yeah so they'll yeah. look like blended. I yeah. mean, I, I guess it comes down to fitment. See how many we can fit in here. Yeah on each side because these are different spacing. Do you know what, do you have like a drawing of it or anything like that? I mean, the spacing is the same between the feet, but with this radius that comes down here, yep. it usually intrudes on that area here. The three banger modules, we'd probably do like a three banger, a four banger, a three banger, a four That's three, like that. dude, you could do four, easy. We have a controller that mounts in the, like in the interior. And that controller lets you basically choose, like if this is the fire truck and you want like traffic directors along this side, yeah, and yeah. you want scene lights on this side, it's got a bunch of buttons. You just tap the buttons and the whole system just comes to life. Okay. So we'll want to put one of those, we call it the user interface panel. We'll want to put one of those button panels somewhere in the interior. So how many wires are we running down? Power, ground, and data. Okay. So, and it's just, it's like can. So oh, okay, cool, cool. So yeah, but you'll need to run like, like a stupid one, like a, like a, like a double lot set to the roof. Yeah, and yeah. then that'll run everything on the roof, but everything's communicating over data, so we don't have to run individual power and grounds for everything. Okay. We might need to build like a box that goes on the roof rack that's like a junction panel box. Well, you may want to do that too as like new products come out. Yeah, yeah, You can yeah. change that out. How do you normally pass wires from inside to outside? Uh, well, we run everything through the, the roof rack that drops down here. And then from this point, we go into this, this crossbar here. Yep. And then we bring it out across here. And then you drop it down on the outside. Oh, no, not on the outside, inside. inside oh, inside the right. tubes. So oh, that's okay. that's the absolute cleanest way to do it. You yeah. can also do it off of the front light bar if you want to. Right. So same tube that comes down, you just bring it down there. Yeah. You can also drop it in here. Just drill a hole in. Yeah, there, there's a vent right here. So you can just pop uh, it through the vent. Interesting. But okay. ideally, we like to keep it on the outside of the vehicle. Right there. Okay. I got to get it clean battery feed off of those batteries up to it somehow. Bumper wise, I mean, we really, we could do a bumper like this and just stick 
Yeah. We have a hybrid light. It, uh, this one's warning and scene light. So you could put the red blinking and the scene light all in we one. We can also offset this too on the inside. Oh, that'd be vertical. sick. So it's not that at this angle. Yeah. It's more like that. Yeah, all of these lights are designed because fire trucks are vertical, like yeah, yeah, fire truck yeah. ambulances. So they're all designed to be perpendicular. Okay. But if we built, like if we built a thing like this and then tucked all those in, they would do both. The, so then we wouldn't need a backup light. These could yeah. be a backup light. Because that would be a problem too, just aesthetically. If everything, you've got like, you're using this as your reverse light, soft tail turn, and then you got one here. It's gonna have too much of this. It's gonna be overpowering the same stuff. Yeah, the same deal. This truck is the FireTech warning light demo vehicle. It's gonna have one clean system and that's it. Everything else will be on displays. Gotcha, gotcha. So okay. yeah, we don't need to make it look like a Christmas tree. Right. I don't think there's anything else that's really big. This is all, this is the type of data cable that needs to go to the roof. So like all the switching and all that shit. Damn dude, that odor is strong. They do all have the same They smell. all have that smell. Yeah. Especially Weird. when they sit, so rotting dead animals when they in. sit forever, they all come in with that. Whatever same moisture smell. is in the air, it goes to the rubber mats in the ground <laughs> and just soaks it up and then just like grows. All right, looks cool. like we basically got it done. I'll pick it up next week. Yeah, next week we'll be done <laughs> for sure. Cool. Well, the battery chain got splashed with the poopy water. That's oh, all like shit dude, right there. that is gross. What?